A traffic sign with a red circle around and a slash over a symbol means a. No parking. b. The action indicated by the symbol on the sign is allowed. c. The action indicated by the symbol on the sign is prohibited. d. Do not enter. A traffic sign with a red circle around and a slash over a symbol means c. The action indicated by the symbol on the sign is prohibited. Road signs that prohibit certain actions will take the form of a red circle with a slash through it over a symbol. Common examples of signs that prohibit things include no parking signs, no right turn on red, no U-turn, no left turn. The color of a motorist service sign is A. Green B. Blue C. Yellow D. Red The color of a motorist service sign is B. Blue Motorist service signs are blue with white lettering and designs. These signs are used to indicate nearby services, such as gas stations, electric vehicle charging stations, call boxes, restaurants, lodging, rest stops, hospitals. To avoid last-minute moves, you should a. Always drive under the speed limit. b. Check your rearview mirror. c. Scan 10 to 15 seconds ahead of your vehicle. D. Always drive in the right lane. To avoid last minute moves, you should C. Scan 10 to 15 seconds ahead of your vehicle. To avoid last minute moves, you'll need to be actively scanning the road ahead for potential hazards you may be approaching. A distance of about 10 to 15 seconds will give you enough time and space to choose the safest option for avoiding any potential hazards you may see. It is also important to keep an eye on traffic behind and to the sides of you by checking your rear view and side view mirrors. When you encounter an aggressive driver, you should a. Give them space and not engage. b. Not allow them to pass. c. Speed up. d. Honk at them. When you encounter an aggressive driver, you should a. Give them space and not engage. If you encounter an aggressive driver, it is important to know how to handle the situation safely. The best thing to do is to allow them to pass, get out of their way, and give them space. In no circumstances should you try to interact or engage with an aggressive driver, be it verbally, with a hand gesture, or your horn. These actions will typically make the situation worse. You are driving on a two-lane highway and are passing a large truck. What is required to pass safely? A. A double solid yellow line dividing the roadway. B. A large enough gap in oncoming traffic. C. A blind curve ahead. D. Driving over the speed limit in order to pass. You are driving on a two-lane highway and are passing a large truck. What is required to pass safely? B. A large enough gap in oncoming traffic. If you are passing another vehicle on a two-lane highway with traffic moving in both directions, you will need a large enough gap and view of oncoming traffic in order to pass safely. Since trucks are larger than other vehicles, you'll typically need a slightly larger gap in oncoming traffic in order to make it pass the truck completely and to be able to return to your lane safely. When driving, if you miss your turn you should a. Continue driving until the next place to turn around. b. Drive in reverse to your turn. c. Do a U-turn, regardless of where you are. d. Stop and complete a three-point turn to get back. When driving, if you miss your turn you should a. Continue driving until the next place to turn around. If you miss your turn or exit, you will have to continue driving until you can find a place to turn around or reroute. Under no circumstances are you allowed to drive in reverse or against oncoming traffic. Doing so is extremely dangerous and highly illegal. Always stop before crossing railroad tracks when a. There are vehicles behind you. b. The gate is up. c. There is not enough room on the other side for you to clear the tracks. D. There is no traffic on the other side of the tracks. Always stop before crossing railroad tracks when C. 
there is not enough room on the other side for you to clear the tracks. Sometimes, you'll encounter railroad crossings that are placed near other intersections controlled by stop signs or traffic lights. In some cases, you may find that traffic starts to get backed up at the intersection near the railroad tracks. If you are waiting to cross the tracks to pull up to the next intersection, it is important that you wait until there is room for your vehicle on the other side before you do so. The headlights must be turned on. A. 30 minutes after sunset until 30 minutes before sunrise. B. 30 minutes before sunset until 30 minutes after sunrise. C. 30 minutes after sunset until 30 minutes after sunrise. D. 30 minutes before sunset until 30 minutes before sunrise. The headlights must be turned on. A. 30 minutes after sunset until 30 minutes before sunrise. When it gets dark and visibility is reduced, your vehicle's headlights serve two purposes. To help you see the road ahead of you. And to help other drivers see you. When the sun sets, it still stays light for a while afterwards. And just before the sun rises, it starts to get light out as well. So, you'll need to turn the headlights on just a little after sunset until a little before sunrise. You are driving too slowly if you a. Are driving below 35 miles per hour at any time. b. Are driving below the posted speed limit. c. Block traffic driving at a normal and safe speed. d. Have someone following you too closely. You are driving too slowly if you c. Block traffic driving at a normal and safe speed. You are driving too slowly if you are impeding upon the normal flow of traffic when other vehicles are driving at a safe, legal speed. Under normal conditions, drives should be driving at the posted speed limit to ensure a safe and smooth flow of traffic. When driving on wet roads you should a. Decrease your speed to no greater than 5 miles per hour. b. Increase your following distance to about 15 to 20 seconds. C. Decrease your following distance. D. Increase your following distance to about 5 or 6 seconds. When driving on wet roads you should. D. Increase your following distance to about 5 or 6 seconds. Whenever you drive on wet surfaces it is a good idea to increase your following distance. A general rule of thumb is to increase your following distance to about 5 or 6 seconds when it is raining or when the road is wet. More space between your vehicle and the car in front of you will give you more time to react and more time to stop effectively, if necessary. Which of the following responses is appropriate when approaching a steady yellow traffic signal? A. Slow down and stop, unless you are already in the intersection. B. Slow down and stop, always. C. Continue through the intersection carefully, always. D. Speed up to get through the intersection. Which of the following responses is appropriate when approaching a steady yellow traffic signal? A. Slow down and stop, unless you are already in the intersection. A yellow traffic light communicates that drivers should use caution because the light is about to change to red. If you see a yellow light as you approach an intersection, you should slow down and come to a stop if it is safe to do so. However, if you are already in the intersection or entering the intersection as the light changes to yellow, you should proceed through the intersection carefully. You may turn right on a solid red light. A. Without stopping completely. B. After coming to a complete stop to yield to pedestrians and other vehicles in the intersection. C. If the traffic light is showing a solid red arrow. D. Even if there is a road sign that prohibits right turns on red. You may turn right on a solid red light. B. After coming to a complete stop to yield to pedestrians and other vehicles in the intersection. Unless otherwise prohibited by a road sign or traffic signal, drivers can make a right turn on a red light after coming to a complete stop behind the limit line. If a right turn on red is allowed, you must first stop and yield to pedestrians crossing the street in front of your and vehicles in the intersection that have the green light. When the intersection is clear, you may carefully make the right turn and continue driving. Low beam headlights are only effective for speeds up to a. 55 miles per hour, b. 
45 miles per hour. C. 35 miles per hour. D. 25 miles per hour. Low beam headlights are only effective for speeds up to D. 25 miles per hour. Your car's low beam headlights are designed to illuminate the road ahead of you for about 160 feet and are only effective for speeds of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. In order to react to a hazard, you need to first identify it, begin to take the necessary actions, and execute an evasive maneuver or stop. If you are driving at night on a dark road, you may only be able to see and react to what is lit up by your headlights. This is where the phrase overdriving your headlights comes from. When do you not need to stop if a school bus is loading or unloading children? A. When you are on the same side of a divided road or multi-lane road with at least two lanes in each direction. B. You never need to stop for a school bus. C. When you are on the opposite side of a divided road or multi-lane road with at least two lanes in each direction. D. You always need to stop for a school bus. When do you not need to stop if a school bus is loading or unloading children? C. When you are on the opposite side of a divided road or multi-lane road with at least two lanes in each direction. The only times you do not have to stop for a school bus that has its red lights flashing or stop arm extended while loading or unloading children include. When you are on the opposite side of a divided highway. When you are on the opposite side of a multi-lane roadway with two or more lanes of traffic in each direction. In these situations, it is less likely that children will be crossing in front of you on your side of the street. However, you should still slow down, pay attention, and exercise caution when passing a school bus that is stopped to pick up or drop off children. When sharing the road with a light rail vehicle, you should A. Never turn in front of a light rail vehicle. B. Drive on the tracks behind the light rail vehicle. C. Pull over to the side of the road until the light rail vehicle passes. D. Also drive through an intersection before the light rail vehicle, even if the traffic light says otherwise. When sharing the road with a light rail vehicle, you should A. Never turn in front of a light rail vehicle. When driving in cities and urban areas, you are likely to encounter roads that are shared by passenger vehicles and light rail vehicles. Light rail vehicles are passenger trains and trolleys that operate in metropolitan areas. The rails they ride on often intersect the road and share certain parts of the road with lanes of traffic. It is important to know how to safely share the road with a light rail vehicle. When driving slower than the rest of the traffic, in which lane should you be driving? A. Right. B. Left. C. Center. D. Any lane. When driving slower than the rest of the traffic, in which lane should you be driving? A. The right lane. On a multi-lane highway, it is important for drivers to choose the appropriate lane depending on how they're driving or what types of maneuver they wish to make. If you are driving slower than other traffic on the road, you should be driving in the rightmost lane. When slow traffic keeps to the right, it helps maintain a safe, normal flow of traffic. When approaching a curve the best thing to do is A. Slow down before you enter the curve. B. Speed up before you enter the curve. C. To always take the curve at 25 miles per hour. D. Turn on your hazard lights. When approaching a curve the best thing to do is A. Slow down before you enter the curve. The best thing to do when approaching a curve in the road is to slow down before you enter the curve. This means that you should apply your brakes and begin to reduce your speed before you enter the section of the road that curves. Once you are in the curve, you can accelerate through it as necessary. Taking a curve too fast or braking too hard within the curve can create a dangerous situation. A vehicle suddenly cuts in front of you creating a hazard. What should you do first? A honk your horn. B. Change lanes. C. Slam on the brake. D. Take your foot off the gas pedal. A vehicle suddenly cuts in front of you creating a hazard. What should you do first? D. Take your foot off the gas pedal.
If a vehicle suddenly cuts too closely in front of you while driving, the first thing you should do is to take your foot off the gas pedal. This will allow you to create some space between your vehicle and the vehicle in front of you without having to slam on the brakes or quickly change lanes. When you drive through a construction zone, you should a. Slow down and be prepared to stop at any time. b. Speed up to get through the area quickly. c. Come to a stop until instructed to proceed by a worker. d. Drive the same as you would anywhere else. When you drive through a construction zone, you should a. Slow down and be prepared to stop at any time. Driving through construction zones poses additional hazards. Whenever you need to drive through an area where road work is happening, you should reduce your speed and be prepared to stop. In many cases, the speed limit will be reduced, there may be a flagger directing traffic, and the normal flow of traffic may be temporarily diverted. Give the workers plenty of space and follow the instructions of anyone directing traffic. If you drive faster than other vehicles on a road with one lane in each direction, a. You won't have any tailgaters. B. You'll reach your destination faster. C. You'll increase the risk of a collision. D. Other drivers must yield to you when you want to pass. If you drive faster than other vehicles on a road with one lane in each direction, C. You'll increase the risk of a collision. Driving faster than the normal flow of other traffic and constantly passing other vehicles on two lane, Two-way roads greatly increases the risk of a collision. If traffic is busy, you should reduce your speed. In a vehicle equipped with dual airbags the safest place for infants is A. Any seat. B. The front seat. C. The back seat. D. On the driver's lap. In a vehicle equipped with dual airbags the safest place for infants is, c, the back seat. While airbags are designed to help keep an adult safe in the event of a crash, they can present a serious safety risk for small children. For this reason, all small children, infants, and babies should be seated in the back seat in an appropriate car seat or booster seat. It is important to confirm that any car seats or booster seats are the right size based on the child's weight and height. It is also important to confirm that the seat is latched on properly and securely to the car. When driving on an expressway, if you want to change lanes you should signal in. A. Change multiple lanes at a time. B. Immediately changes lanes. C. Turn your head to check your blind spots. D. Wait at least 10 seconds. When driving on an expressway, if you want to change lanes you should signal and C. Turn your head to check your blind spots. Once you are certain that you have enough space to change lanes safely, complete the maneuver and cancel your turn signal. Additionally, you should only change one lane at a time. A broken yellow centerline means that A. You can pass on the left if there is no traffic coming from the opposite direction. B. You can pass on the right if there is no traffic coming from the opposite direction. C. You may not pass under any circumstances. D. You can only pass if there is also a road sign that allows it. A broken yellow centerline means that A. You can pass on the left if there is no traffic coming from the opposite direction. A broken yellow centerline dividing lanes of traffic moving in opposite directions indicates that passing on the left is permitted when the road is clear of traffic moving the other way. If a two-lane road is divided by a single, broken yellow line, that means that traffic moving in either direction is allowed to use the opposite lane to pass. You are driving on a highway and your gas pedal gets jammed. What should you do? A. Shift into neutral. B. Apply the brakes to slow down. C. Pull off the road, stop, and turn off the engine. D. All of these. You are driving on a highway and your gas pedal gets jammed. What should you do? D. All of these. Having your car's gas pedal get stuck while driving can be a dangerous situation. It's important to know how to handle it properly. If you notice that your gas pedal has become stuck or if your vehicle won't stop accelerating, 
shift your vehicle into neutral to disengage the transmission. Your engine will still be running, but it will not deliver power to make you go faster. Safely slow down by applying the brakes. When driving in rain the road becomes the most slippery. A. A day after it has rained. B. Right before it starts to rain. C. During the first hour of rain. D. During the first 10 to 15 minutes of rain. When driving in rain the road becomes the most slippery. D. During the first 10 to 15 minutes of rain. Rainy and wet conditions add more hazards to every type of situation on the road. The road will be more slick and visibility will be reduced. The start of a rainstorm tends to be when the road surface is the most slippery. During the first 10 to 15 minutes of rain, oil that has been on the surface of the road and absorbed by the asphalt will mix with the rain. This makes for a more slippery surface than after the rain washes most of the oil away. Great job! Here are some of your next steps to getting your learner's permit or driver's license. Read and study the official driver handbook from your state DMV. Take more free practice tests at puedomanejar.com. Gather all your necessary forms and documents before you visit the DMV office. Before you know it, you'll be driving in your very own car all by yourself. puedomanejar.com Free DMV practice tests and much more to help you pass your real exams. Visit us today.